How to build a DIY aeroponic system for plants. First, we start with a bin made from HDPE. Next, we use a two inch hole saw to cut holes in the lid. Later, these will house our net cups. Once the holes are done, we clean up the edges using a deburring tool and wash the bins. After that, we place the bins onto the grow rack. We then add air stones inside, run the tubing, and connect them to an air pump. This pump will run 24 7. Next, we set up the misting device, attaching it to a water pump connected to a timer. This ensures the plant roots get misted with a fertilizer water mix throughout the day. And that's it! The simple DIY aeroponic system is how we've been growing a variety of greens indoors with minimal effort. You can find a link to the supplies in our bio, and be sure to watch out for more videos. DIY aeroponic system watering setup. A lot of people asked, and there are two ways to do it. Option one, you can get this pre-made spray manifold on Amazon. It connects to your water pump with tubing and sprays the roots. It's super easy to install and you can find the link for that in our bio. Here's the spray pattern. Option number two, you can build your own using irrigation tubing and micro sprinkler heads commonly found at Lowe's and Home Depot. This lets you customize your mister setup, but it does take more time and effort, and I highly suggest having someone strong around because punching the holes in the tubing can be quite hard. Here's the spray pattern. Both options connect to a water pump, which is plugged into a timer. The timer runs every 30 minutes for 15 minutes a day. And that's how we water our plants. Stay tuned for more. We've received a lot of questions about our lighting, so today I want to share with you our lighting setup for our DIY aeroponics system. Since we're growing adult plants, we need more light than we typically recommend for microgreens. For this setup, we're using three 40-watt LED lights, positioned 10 inches above the plant canopy. As the plants grow taller, the distance will naturally decrease over time. For those curious about PAR readings, we measure them for you and you can see the results here. The lights are plugged into a timer set for 14 hours on and 10 hours off daily. There's nothing fancy about these lights. They're LED shop lights with a daylight spectrum of around 6,500K and a cover over the diodes. We start by adding water to a five gallon food grade bucket. If we need more water, we simply repeat the process. This is the fertilizer mix we're using. For each five gallon bucket, we measure 12 grams of master blend, seven and a half grams of Epsom salt, and 12 grams of calcium nitrate. First, we add the master blend to the water and mix. Next, we add the Epsom salt and mix. Finally, we add the calcium nitrate and mix. Once everything is dissolved, we let it rest for a bit. After resting, we check the pH levels using a pH pin and adjust with pH down until we hit the 5.5, 6.0 range. Once mixed, we carefully pour the fertilizer into the aeroponic system until the water level is just beneath the misters. And anytime we need to clean the water, this is what we use. We're planning on testing these fertilizers soon. It's time to open up these seeds and start some new plant starts for our aeroponic systems and hydroponic towers. We start by prepping the rock wall cubes by soaking them in some pH balanced water And then after they have soaked for a bit, it's time to plant up all of our seeds by placing them into the little holes on each one of the cubes. Usually we try to use one to two seeds per cube. That way, in case some of them don't germinate, we do have a backup seed in each one of the holes. Now we place them on the shelf and wait for them to germinate. After they emerge just above the rock wall cube, we transfer them over to a separate tray. This is when we introduce fertilizer for the first time and place them under the light. If using a weaker light, we raise the tray to get it closer to it. After one to two weeks of light and feeding, the plants will be tall enough to move into the aeroponic system. We start by placing the plant into a two inch deep net cup. Next, we gently insert the plug around the stem. If needed, we cut the hole slightly bigger for a better fit. Finally, we place the plant into the aeroponic system where its roots will begin getting misted with the fertilizer water. Over time, both the roots and plant will continue to grow. And that's how we plant up our DIY aeroponic system. 
Supplies can be found through the link in our bio. Here's everything we have growing indoors right now. In our DIY aeroponics system, one setup is growing purple gem pok choy cabbage, scarlet red tat soy mustard, and shiso. While the other is filled with Swiss chard. We also have a ton of basil that was transferred into soil from the aeroponic system and towers during the last clean out. Our hand pollinated habanero peppers are thriving in this mini DWC system. And we even have these lettuce starts. We harvested a lot from our first aeroponic and vertical tower grows, and we're excited to see how this new batch turns out. Oh, and of course, we have plenty of microgreens too. In this video, we are sharing with you our pak choy and tat soy harvest from our viral video, How to Build a DIY Aeroponic System that received over 4 million views on Instagram. In part one, we share the DIY build for the system. Part two, we cover the watering setup. Part three, we went over the lighting. Part four, we shared mixing fertilizer. Part five was seed starting. And in part six, we had given an update on the plants. And now it's been a few weeks and it's time to harvest our pak choy and tat soy from the grow system. I start by cutting off the roots. Then I'll remove a lot of these bottom leaves and cut right at the base. Now I'll just repeat the process for each of the pak choy. When I got to the last plant, which was the tat soy, it was by far the largest in the group, and I had to use a knife to cut the base. This is everything that I harvested from the system. Each had beautiful stems, leaf development, and coloration. The tat soy almost looked surreal because it was so perfect. I mean, just look at those stems. We harvested five large and a handful of baby pak choy from the system. And I was obsessed with the coloration on the red gem pak choy. And later that day, we enjoyed some of the pak choy for a stir fry. While I enjoyed growing the pak choy in tat soy, I prefer growing Swiss chard, which grows faster and more abundantly in the system. How to build a DIY deep water culture system for plants. We start with a bin made from HDPE. Using a two inch hole saw, we cut spaced out holes in the lid. These holes will later house our net cups and the plants. Using a drill bit, we also drill a hole for the tubing. Once the holes are cut, we clean up the edges with a deburring tool and give the bin a good wash. After cleaning, we place the bin on the grow rack. We connect the tubing to the air pump, then run the other end through the hole on the lid. Next, we attach the air stone to the tubing connected to the air pump. This keeps the water aerated. Then we toss the net cups into all the holes on the lid. And then fill the container with water. After all the water is added, we mix in our plant fertilizer and balance and check the pH level. With the lid closed, the bottom of the net cup will be touching the water. Now we can plant our seed starts. We're growing Ford Hook Swiss chard and carefully place each rock wool cube into the holes on the lid. The net cups prevent the plants from falling into the reservoir. As the plants grow, their roots will extend into the water beneath. And thanks to the fertilizer we added, this water provides them with essential vitamins and minerals for their development, along with the grow lights. The grow lights are set on a timer, whereas the air pump runs 24-7. And that's it! This simple DIY deep water culture, or DWC, system is a great way to grow greens indoors with minimal effort. The supplies are linked in our bio, and be sure to check out our page for more videos.